In this video, I'm going to be making some bannock to go with my lunch, but something a little different today, something sweet, made with spruce tips. If you're interested in seeing how I make it, keep watching. All right, before I start making my bannock with spruce tips, I just want to take a second to talk about the spruce tips themselves. So these are the tips from the black spruce, one of our more uh, prevalent spruce here in Nova Scotia. We have three. We have the black spruce, the red spruce, and the white spruce. Now, I have a full video on the spruce, specifically the black spruce, that I made last year this time, that I will link at the end of the video rather than talk about all the nutritional and medicinal properties that spruce has. But suffice it to say, it has a wonderful flavor and it has got a lot of medicinal qualities that make it worth looking at. But they're only around for a short period of time before they get too big to really use, at least the way I'm going to use them. All right, so I'll take you down to the ground to, uh, next to the fire pit here, and we'll get started. All right, so there's no really any special magic in, ter in terms of making a bannock with spruce tips. It starts with a bannock, bannock mix, and you add spruce tips. It's just that easy. I'm just going to make it a little different today. So I do have a small quantity, maybe two tablespoons, maybe a little bit more, of the spruce tips collected up in my little bowl here. And I'm, what I'm going to do that's just a little different is uh, I have often just added them right into the bannock. And it works, and it makes a nice tasting bannock, but it's a very, very mild flavor, and there's not a very strong flavor to it. Nice texture, nice flavor, yes, but not all that strong. So I'm going to do something a little different today that I don't usually do. I have done it before. It does work, but it's a completely optional step. So what is that? I am going to, as soon as I can find my olive oil, put my olive oil that I'll be using in this anyway in right on top of the spruce tips and my sweetener. Now I'm using a monk fruit sweetener and monk fruit is a no calorie sweetener that is very very close to sugar and I'm going to put in about a tablespoon I guess right directly in on top of them and I took a stick and I made you know like a mortar and pretzel so this would be the Pencil, I guess, and I'm just going to crush them up a little bit to release some of the flavors from the spruce tips into the oil and the sweetener. And yes, you can do this with butter or margarine or shortening. Or my two favorites that I most often use are ghee and uh, coconut oil. They'll all work. And sugar, and I said, think I said you can use a regular bannock mix. Of course, I'm using the ketogenic bannock mix today. But uh, you can see I'm just kind of crushing them some to release some of the flavors. And I think that's pretty good. Get all the goodness off the end of my stick here. Good. And from there, mm, oh, I can taste the uh, spruce right in. So spruce has a nice citrusy flavor is the best way. It's a little tart, a little tangy. Certainly not objectionable. I eat them all the time going across the trail. There. Okay. So, get behind my spoon. And all I'm doing here is just mixing in that oil in through, well, oil and sweetener and spruce tips in through the bannock mix. And again, this is my ketogenic bannock mix made primarily with almond flour, although it does have salt and uh, baking powder, of course. And I think I usually put in a little bit of psyllium husk. It helps to hold it together, especially when I'm not using an egg. Normally I would use an egg for this type of thing, but not today. All right, I've got the oil as mixed through as I can possibly get it. Now comes the fun part, getting it to hold together with some water. And I do have my fry pan here, which I'm gonna to have to use to lay this down on when I've got it mixed. I don't know if you can tell, but it is extremely, extremely windy here today. So windy that every once in a while I'll hear this creaking noise and I look up to make sure that I'm not about to have a branch come down on top of me. 
I'm not underneath anything that looks like it might, but you know, you never know, right? So it's starting to go together. And I've said before, be careful not to add too much water because when you do, it's hard to take it out. This is something you want to pick up with your hands, so you want it to be fairly thick and heavy. And I think we're as close as we're going to get. And as I mentioned before, if you leave it set for a minute before you try to pick it up with your hands, it usually gets a little drier as the almond flour in this case soaks up some of the moisture. All right, we're going to leave that set for a minute or two while I get my cooking vessel ready. All right, so I gave the bannock a few minutes to rest and uh, let me show you what it is now and then I'll show you how I'm going to use it. Obviously my kettle. This is my GSI stainless steel kettleist and I decided to bring that out today to do the baking in. It is deep enough and then mouth on that is wide enough on the top that uh, it'll work just fine but I'll show you how I'm going to use it in a minute. First let's form the bannock. So let's see if it is, oh yeah it's going to hold together. Oh yeah this is nice. This is going to work together well. So I'm just forming a patty as usual. Nothing special here. The bigger, the flatter you can get it, the better. I'm going to lay it in the fry pan. I'm going to use the grate, the grilling grate from the stove that I'm using today, which is the FlexFire 4 from Wicca Technologies. That's what I'm cooking over today, again with charcoal. Unfortunately, again, well, with this wind and the low humidity and the high temperatures and the lack of rain, I fully understand why fires aren't allowed today, but again, we're so fortunate we can use charcoal. So my charcoal is heating up on the stove right now. It'll take a few minutes, but what I'll do is get this ready. So you can see I'm just going to lay it on top of the grill. My spacer is a canning ring. This is one of the larger canning rings, so I'll drop that down inside. And gently lower this in. A little tricky. It's not quite wide enough for me to get all my hand inside, but I can do it if I work at it a little bit. There, sits down inside. And I can put this on upside down. And that's how I am going to use it, so I can get some coals on top to speed things along a little bit when I get it on top of the, uh, the stove. So uh, that's what I'll do. As soon as my charcoal is up to temperature, I'll bring it back. Okay, so I have featured the FlexFire 4 from Wicca Technologies before and I do have a full comprehensive view uh, video of it coming up shortly. It's all prepared to go. I'm just going to wait for uh, a good time to release it. But uh, you, it looks as if I haven't used it before. And the reason I, it looks like that is because the plate that's facing the camera now is one of the Omega plates that I have not used before and this one is intended especially for use with charcoal. So when that plate is in place there are no feed ports. It's just a straight wall chimney. chimney nowhere for heat to be lost. I mean it is warm but I'm not losing heat out of a feed port like you might from the charcoal. So uh, that's why it looks like that. I am going to be placing the catalyst directly on top but what I want to do first is recover a few of the hot coals to put on top of the catalyst. So I think that one's going to go back in, but oh, there's a good one to put on top. Now maybe I'll put this one on top. You can go back in. Great. Okay. So I'm putting the kettle on top, but one more thing, and you're probably already asked yourself, Aren't I going to lose a whole lot of heat out of the uh, spout of the kettle? And yes, you would. So I made a little plug out of a piece of a maple branch. It's not especially tight, but it is tight enough that I won't lose any heat out of there. I can put that on top. Drop my hot coals, and they are hot, on top. And that's all there is to it. Now it's just a waiting game. So. 15 minutes, I'll give it a check and I'll see how it's done. All right, good 15 minutes now. Oh, it's not too hot, great. Let's take the lid off. Oh, oh, some nice browning on top too, good. A little toothpick. Yep, nice and dry. All right, so that's done. So, uh, 
It's going to be a bit tricky for me to get this out of the kettle, but not impossible. And then in any case, you want to let it set for, I don't know, five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. It's not going to cool off so much in that period of time, but uh, you want it to let it set so it firms up and cools down a little bit. So what I'll do is when I'm ready to give you a taste test, that's when I'll bring you back. All right, Bandic is ready. I just had a lunch. Uh, I'll share with you what my lunch was. It'll appear in another video. I made something very special with a very special cheese and wrapped in bacon. And if that doesn't stimulate your appetite and make you wonder, I don't know what was. So watch for that video. If it doesn't come out before this one, it may come out before this video does. All right, so what did my bannock turn out like? Let's give me a little look. Break off a piece. Yeah, okay, good. It turned out the way I wanted it to. Uh, you can see some of the spruce tips are a little lighter green, and that's because that grinding action, that mixing in with the olive oil, distributed some of the green throughout the rest of the bannock, just the way I'd hoped to. A little brown on top, not too brown, but that's not bad. I'm not disappointed. But what does it taste like, right? Smells good. Okay, a uh, little chewy, that's fine. That's also the way I wanted it to because I did add the sweetener to it. This was meant to be a dessert bannock, not so much a meal bannock like a bread. So it's similar to a cookie or a cake you might have after, after a meal. It's just that sweetness added on the end. And of course, as I said, I made mine with a, a natural calorie-free, carb-free sweetener known as monk fruit. Monk fruit. Monk fruit and erythrorol, which is an alcohol sugar. I'll put that in the information below if you're interested. It is uh, all natural. It doesn't have any chemicals or anything in it, and it's zero carbs, but it adds a lot of sweetness. And the bannock recipe, of course, is my almond flour mix, which is very low carb again. But as I said, you can use any bannock recipe. You can use sugar if that's your thing uh, to make this, and it works out just as well. Hmm. That's good. Oh, I got the flavor that time really strongly. Not overly strong, just a nice added flavor to the bannock. And just in case anybody was wondering, yes, I am having a cup of coffee with my bannock. <laughs> Rampage coffee. Made it with my AeroPress. Oh, that's a nice way to end this meal off, let me tell you. Okay. If you have any questions about how I made this bannock with spruce tips, any comments, any suggestions, any requests for other types of meals you'd like to see me try and make out here in the, in the woods, by all means, put them in the comments section below. But while I finish off my bannock and coffee, take the opportunity to get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.